Also this morning, rock climbing made its Olympic debut. They call it sport climbing at the Games. Four years ago, professional rock climber Alex Honnold became the... Hello. Today I present to you an extremely attractive application for music lovers. It's completely free. You can listen to music online or download unlimited music to use whenever you don't have internet. The powerful search function helps you find anything you want. Trust me. It's hard not to find what you're looking for because the search function is really powerful. Application download link is attached in the description of the video. I'm pretty sure you'll like it. Thanks. The first person to climb the 3,000 foot cliff at El Capitan in Yosemite National Park without any ropes. His historic feat was captured in the Academy Award winning documentary Free Solo. He's now the co host of a new podcast, Climbing Gold. Alex Honnold joins us. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Can you tell me? I'm curious how you feel, what the impact you think. Uh, being in the Olympics for climbing will mean to the sport in general. It's hard to say exactly. I mean, we'll, we'll find out in a few days, basically. But, uh, but that's a lot of what we tried to explore in season two of Climbing Gold, looking at what uh, exactly the Olympics, what, what effect the Olympics will have on climbing. You, you, it'll certainly mean a lot more recognition, don't you think? Yeah, you would think so. But actually, climbing has been seeing tremendous growth as it is, which I think is a big part of why it's been welcomed into the Olympics this year. And so it's hard to know if, if the Olympic bump will be any bigger than the, the bump that climbing is already seeing just from the, the growth of climbing gyms and the popularity in general. The U.S. Is sending, has sent four climbers to compete in Tokyo. Who will you be particularly watching out for? Well, so I've been, uh, I've been watching the, the male qualifications this morning already. And uh, so one, one of the climbers, Colin Duffy, has been doing very well. And so I'm very excited to see the, the final discipline, which will be starting, I think, in a few moments. And, uh, you know, we'll see how he does. But, uh, but no, I'd say that uh, Team USA is, is outperforming expectations already. Alex, you know there have got to be people watching who are thinking, this guy is crazy. He yeah. climbs <laughs> this with nothing. What's like, wrong with like, him? What, what, yeah. what does it take to want to do that? I mean, uh, talk, talk to those of us who are sitting there going, uh, yeah, no way I'm doing that. I would say that it's more complicated than you might think. I mean, uh, free soloing El Cap was the culmination of, of a 10 or 15 year journey in, in climbing and free soloing for me. And, and I've been climbing full time myself for 25 years. So, you know, you watch a little clip and you're like, that looks, that looks crazy. But you have to put it in the proper context of years of practice, a lifetime of dedication to this and, and you know, a constant pursuit of, of steadier, you know, basically a constant pursuit of challenges, pushing myself as I go. Is there a fear? Yeah, I mean, for sure, there's fear when you start. That's that's kind of the whole. I mean, that's why it takes 25 years of practice and and uh, you know preparation, all those things. Uh, yeah, it's. I'm just as afraid of falling off of something as anybody else. The the key is to get to the point where I'm sure that I won't fall off. And how do you get to that point, Alex? I'm trying to figure <laughs> out what it takes because I can't even imagine what it would take to even learn how to do this. How do you get to the point? What do you focus on to, to make this happen? Well, I think a lot of it is just uh, desensitizing myself over time, basically mm -hmm. becoming comfortable in that position, steadily increasing my exposure to those kinds of areas, like progressively increasing the load, you know, doing things that are similar and then slightly harder and then slightly harder and then eventually getting to a place where you're doing something that's actually quite hard. So you, you, actually, you actually, I read that you actually memorized, essentially memorized 3,000 feet of climbing for El Capitan. Is that right? Wow. Uh, yeah, that is basically true in that case and that's because El Cap meant so much to me and it was such a big challenge for me that that's kind of what it required I mean that's not always the case it's not like every climb you have to to prepare that rigorously but in in my case for El Cap it felt like that was necessary what Alex, exactly are you memorizing I'm just yeah, curious because <laughs> when I look yeah. at it it all looks the same to me I'm just curious what exactly are you memorizing help us understand what you do how you do what you do yeah, well, actually, so in the in the spirit of climbing being in the Olympics, I feel like this is a good good analogy because so much of climbing is the problem solving, figuring out where to put each hand and where to move your feet, and and basically how to figure out, you know, how to climb the problem. And so I was memorizing all the the intricate positions of left hand, right hand, how to stay balanced over my feet, and that's exactly what the competitors in the Olympics are are struggling with, you know, basically as we speak. We've all heard people say on television, "Don't try this at home." Yeah. What do you say to people watching this who want to try what you do? I mean, is is this something anyone can do? What type of person does it take? I think if somebody gives it 25 years of practice, then, then go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you have to put enough preparation into it. Alex, what's next for you? How do you top El Cap? 
Uh, it's hard to say. I'm working on a few climbing projects. I'm, uh, I mean, I'm here in my garage, you know, training as, as much as possible. I've been working on the podcast, obviously, and uh, following the Olympics closely. I mean, basically, I'm just pursuing my own personal climbing projects. Do you what wish you'd had a shot at the Olympics? Uh, not, not really. <laughs> what kind of, what kind of training goes on in the garage? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, you know, bouldering behind me, uh, you know, endurance climbing power. I mean, basically all, all kinds of different, uh, different styles of climbing, which is actually a lot of what you're seeing in the Olympics right now is the different breakdowns of, of climbing, like different ways to climb. You got to be excited though, Alex, before we go that it's in the Olympics, at yeah. least more people will know about it. will know about what it is and how you do it. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's good. But I mean, realistically, it's not like that improves my personal climbing experience. <laughs> you know, I think, that's, I think that's great for the sport. I think that's probably good for climbing. But uh, but realistically, I'm just going to the mountains and, and pursuing my own projects. You know. All right. The, it's all the, on you, Alex. All Alex Honnold, you. thank you so much for being with us this morning. You can listen to his podcast, Climbing Gold, on Spotify.